We're broadcasting. And it's nice to be back. Everybody's stressed out. Happy Monday. And it's E3. Video games are supposed to be fun. All right. Ready? Daily Tech News Show is brought to you by me. You're welcome. But it's also brought to you by over 4,000 other people who also find some value in it every day. If you listen for the next 30 minutes and get even a little bit of value out of it yourself, consider going to patreon.com and searching for Daily Tech News Show and giving some value back. Now roll that beautiful theme music. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, June 15th, 2015. I'm Tom Merritt. And joining me today, as she does most Mondays, host of Dear Veronica on Engadget, the new hit show. Ms. Veronica Belmont, how are you? Happy Monday, Tom. How are you? Oh, I am lovely. It's Monday. Who doesn't love a Monday? Who doesn't uh, love a Monday? I'm back after being away for a uh, for some other work last week, but a huge, huge thanks to everybody who covered last week, especially Ms. Jenny Josephson, our comp- our producer, and Roger Chang, who's going to join us today as well to talk a little E3. How are you doing, Roger? I am good. I am just catching up on E3's press event. Yeah, I got Roger uh, paying attention to the EA press event. Basically, there's no time during the day where somebody's not going to be announcing something or about to announce something. Uh, so he's going to keep an eye on EA. We'll talk about Bethesda. We'll talk about Microsoft and all that good stuff. Uh, but Veronica, would you like to uh, start the headlines now? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. As I mentioned, Microsoft had their E3 press conference this morning. The crowd pleaser of the announcement was backwards compatibility for some Xbox 360 games on the Xbox One. Uh, Select titles to start with, and they say they'll increase over time, will show up automatically if you bought them through Xbox Live, and they can be added uh, individually if you bought them on disc just by putting the disc in. Uh, They do have to be a qualifying title. A new Xbox Wireless Elite controller was also announced. That one's coming in the autumn. No price on that yet, but it's fully reprogrammable. Even has swappable buttons and analog sticks. You can just it has a carrying case. It's crazy. Uh, Windows 10 was announced as a platform for Valve VR. Uh, they showed off a version of Minecraft for HoloLens, which kind of stunned the audience as well. And, of course, games, 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 games. Uh, among those announcements were Halo 5 Guardians. That's coming October 27th. Rainbow Six Siege, October 13th. Rare Replay, that's 30 of their classic games for 30 bucks, coming August 4th. Rise of the Tomb Raider got a lot of positive response. That's November 10th. Also Cuphead, Dark Souls 3. We're going to talk about this a little more in a bit, so hang on. Yeah, the controller was especially interesting, I think, to a lot of people in the audience, particularly the PC set. Uh, There was so much discussed about the compatibility between Windows 10 and Xbox One. Uh, I think we'll talk about that more later as well. But yeah, definitely a lot for PC gamers. I think this is really Microsoft reaching out to that crowd again and being like, hey, you thought we forgot you. We haven't forgotten you. We're bringing you back in. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, Moving on, Bethesda kicked off the pre-E3 press extravaganza last night. A new Doom, just called Doom, is the first game on the new ID Tech 6 engine. Uh, uh, Sorry, id Tech Tech 6 engine. Uh, It has an accessible modding tool called SnapMap and will come to PS4, Xbox One, and PC in spring 2016. Elder Scrolls Legends is a strategy card game with a trailer very similar to Hearthstone's. uh, Free to play on iPad and PC by the end of the year. A big one I'm excited about, Dishonored 2 is coming, though we don't know quite when. And of course, Fallout 4 arrives November 10th. I am so stoked with mods, and uh, you can create on PC and then transfer them over to Xbox One, and a Pip-Boy app that can be best used inside a full-sized real-life Pip-Boy sleeve available in a collector's edition. And of course, the free-to-play Fallout mobile game called Fallout Shelter has launched. Um, I downloaded that, and I've been playing that for the last 10 hours or so. Very addictive, very fun. (laughs) Have you really been playing it since they announced it? Yeah, pretty much all my all my little vault dwellers are slowly dying of radiation because I didn't build a science lab fast enough. So be warned, build a okay. science lab science often lab. and early. Or or you end up in a really bad version of wool by Hugh Howey. <laughs> yes. 
Facebook launched a new app called Moments uh, that groups photos based on when they were taken and identifies who is in them. You can then choose to sync them with specific friends and vice versa. They can sync theirs with you. It can also group photos based on who is in them and lets you search for photos of particular people. Moments launched today in the U.S. on iOS and Android. More countries will follow over time. I guess the idea is sometimes it's really hard for people to share their photos at an event. And so Facebook says, well, we'll know when you took them. We'll know who's in the pictures. And so you can easily just go, oh, all of these pictures are this event. That's for you, Veronica. How about just build that into the Facebook app and don't make me download another stupid app? You say that. I do say that. I no? feel like... If Tom. they, I'm just going to play devil's advocate here. Okay. I feel like if they did build it into the app, we'd all be saying, oh, the app is so complicated. Now there's moments on top of timeline and messenger. And like if everything was in there, that wouldn't that be too much? No, I hate switching back and forth. I hate even having to use messenger. And so the idea of having to use yet another application on top of it, I guess I'm just bitter that I'm still on Facebook at all. And so having to download <laughs> that everyone even more uses it and you're like forced to use it basically. I'm basically and trapped. Yeah. Inside Facebook, and now I have to download more things to make it a better experience. Homie, don't play that. I used to be, uh, I used to not play that, that kind of multiple app thing. I'm, I'm with you on the Facebook thing. I'm sort of in, unwillingly being dragged into it more and more all the time. But I thought Swarm and Foursquare would really annoy me a lot more than it did. But because it can automatically go back and forth between the apps, it almost feels seamless. I haven't yet. I've almost actually forgotten that they're the same technically the same company and app and and that well they're not the same app but i, I use right. them independently for such different reasons now see. that I've, I've gotten used to that but i don't feel like this is the same scenario that's just me that's yeah. a lot of talking for for one news segment uh... recode has a breakdown of the revenue split for apple's music apple executive robert Kondurk, uh... who negotiates music deals said apple will pay out seventy one point five percent of the ten dollars a month subscription revenue from the u.s. outside the u.s. a percentage will be around seventy three percent uh, that will be split up somehow among mu music owners, uh, the, that would be the labels and publishers, uh, one assumes based on plays. Apple, however, will not pay labels for rights to their music during the three-month free trial, which begins on June 30th. Yeah, this is interesting because we always th hear Apple with a very rigid 70-30 split, and we think that that's actually, you know, very, very generous to developers, uh, some people think. But it looks like the music companies were like, well, we want just a couple percentages more than that. And honestly, uh, that can mean several million dollars, if, if not more. Yes. Makes all the difference. <laughs> money, money, money. VentureBeat reports that Razer has acquired Android uh, game console maker Ouya. Investment bank Mesa Global has confirmed the deal. Razer has not, at least not yet. VentureBeat says Ouya debt holders triggered the sale and would cost $10 million to buy out the debt holders. Razer has its own Android console called Forge. Ouya has a library, though, of 11, or, uh, 1,124 Android games, including some exclusives and more than 40,000-plus developers. So, yeah. Razer can sell hardware. Ouya can encourage developers. It seems like a match made in heaven. I love Razer stuff. I'm a big fan of, of that company and, and all their you know, peripherals and, and devices. So I think that's, that's a good move for them. It's exciting. The Next Web reports that Skype for Web is now available worldwide. Uh, Skype's web app works with IE, Chrome, Safari, and Firefox on Windows and OS X, as well as on Chrome OS and Linux. Uh, for now, you'll need a plug-in to make calls, but in the future, the web app will use WebRTC, which is really great. I, I actually downloaded it into um, on my uh, Windows, uh, Windows machine, my gaming box. It didn't work right away. Um, I think it might have had to, something to do with the plug-in, um, but I was really trying to get it downloaded very quickly because I was using the Metro app and that didn't work at all. It just started crashing and crashing and I was like, ooh, I, I better try to download a new client and, and I went on and, and it said, oh, you can use it on the web now. I said, okay, that's a faster fix. Didn't work, so then I ended up downloading the new, the new app anyway. Well, that, that's cool called story, using, Veronica. That's called using a web plugin, right? I mean, yes. that's the danger of doing it this way. So I'm much more looking forward to WebRTC and seeing how they implement mm -hmm. that. Because, yeah, anytime you involve plugins, man, you're just, in, you're just adding complexity. Totally. Yeah. 
New York Times reports IBM will commit hundreds of millions of dollars to developing Apache Spark, the open source project for real-time data analysis. Spark was developed at the Algorithms, Machines, and People Lab at the University of California, Berkeley. And IBM says it's now going to put more than 3,500 developers and researchers to work on Spark-related projects. They're going to embed Spark in the data analysis software IBM sells and even offer Spark as a service. Uh, so this is kind of IBM playing kingmaker. They've done this before. They, a lot of people credit the rise of Linux in great part to IBM starting to support it in the early 2000s. Obviously, the PC revolution was sparked by IBM. Oh. I, I was just ran right into that one. I couldn't avoid it uh, back in the 80s. So this could be another uh, example of, of taking an open source project and launching it into the stratosphere. Very cool. Good stuff from IBM. And Gadget reports Spotify has launched a site called SpotifyTasteRewind.com, which analyzes your music library to recommend decade-specific playlists from the 1960s through whatever we call the last decade before this one. So, for instance, if I like Major Lazer, Wiz Khalifa, and Pitbull, my 1970s playlist might have Bob Marley, the Isley Brothers, and Julio Iglesias, which is what happened for Tom. That is exactly what happened when I went in. How did that I work out for you? Those people. The, the decade, the old decade playlists were pretty awesome. Although I'm pretty sure that it's taking in your library into account. Because I liked those three people mm -hmm. and it put the Beach Boys in my 60s playlist. I'm trying to find the ties. Yeah. I'm trying to find, I'm sure they're in there somewhere. I, I have to assume there, there Spotify some, is smarter about music than I am. I mean, some kind of music genome like. Uh, similarity in there, maybe. Mm -hmm. Pet sounds, Perhaps. right? Pretty innovative. <laughs> Major Laser, very innovative. Uh, time now for some news from you. I've missed you guys. DailyTechNewsShow.reddit.com, though, kept things going, uh, and it never stops. Go join thousands of people who let us know what stories they're interested in hearing us talk about at DailyTechNewsShow.reddit.com. Uh, the man who makes our chat room possible, among many other things, T2T2, informed us that the makers of Notepad++ have left SourceForge. A blog post on Notepad++.org cites SourceForge's several incidents where SourceForge is bundling adware into hosted Ooh. open source projects without notifying the owners and creators of the software. The post reads, such a shameless policy should be condemned, and the Notepad++ project will move entirely out of SourceForge. The post encourages other project owners to also move off SourceForge, and T2 in the uh, chat room pointed out just before the show a, subreddit, or a Reddit thread that uh, SourceForge is now doing this to Firefox. Whoa. <laughs> so, what? wow. It'll be interesting to see what comes of that. That's crazy. Man. That's yeah. a big That's a big change. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess we'll, we'll keep bear. an eye on that one. Sometime, or poke in the fox. Poke in that fox. We'll see how it responds. Uh, T Glass 1976 sent us a Gizmodo article about the first prosthetic leg that can simulate sensation. A team at the University of Applied Sciences, Upper Austria, relocated a patient's nerve endings closer to where the prosthesis connects and connected the nerve endings to simulators located on the prosthetic legs, which are then connected to six sensors on the sole of the prosthetic foot. When the sensors push against the ground, the nerve endings get a sense of feeling. The sense of touch makes the user safer and can help stop phantom limb pain. Wow. Yeah, right? I mean, just that idea that you can actually feel your foot on the ground in a prosthetic limb now. Like, now, this has been this. done... This has been done in, in prosthetic arms and fingers already. Um, but it's very interesting, I think, for a leg because you depend so much when walking and, and navigating surfaces and, and, you know, navigating uneven terrain, that sense of touch and pressure really helps you make choices and helps you figure out where you're going and what you're doing. And, you know, I think even, even almost more so than your sense of touch, it's important for kind of living a normal lifestyle in many ways. Uh, so I think that's, that's really quite incredible. Yeah, I, I was going to, I was just going to say like, you know, forget all this idea of like prosthetics, you know, just being able to be controlled more like a human uh, hand or foot. Uh, like you say, you know, we can now, I mean, other than the, the, the sort of close t sense of touch, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's mo mostly pressure sensitive here, but we're getting closer to just having a prosthetic limb that is n in most ways no different than a real one. 
Absolutely, yeah. The, the technology has come so far in the past few years even. And that is a look at the headlines. You want to know more about prosthetic limbs? I don't know. Ask Veronica. Maybe she'll talk about it on the Engadget show. That's true. Uh, Roger Chang, you have been keeping an eye on what EA is saying uh, right now. What have they announced so far? So in terms of the big stuff, first is uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, which is the fourth installment to the uh, RPG from Bioware. And uh, it's announced to be coming in holiday 2016. Uh, Need for Speed. Uh, which uh, basically is, if anyone remembers, is the car driving get away from the cops. Uh, but uh, now they say, quote, built around real-world icons are five action-packed overlapping stories. Um, what those stories may be is yet to be de- uh, determined. However, uh, it will be available for PS4, Xbox One, and PC November 3rd. People who actually still play Star Wars The Old Republic have something to look forward to. They have a new expansion pack arriving October 27th. Knights of the Fallen Empire, and the trailer that they showed showed two brothers, initially young boys, fighting with sticks uh, against each other. And and, uh, um, and as they get older, they become uh, lightsaber-wielding uh, characters. Um, Unravel, which is a kind of a 2D platformer but with a unique twist in that the character and the is is a yarn, is made up of yarn uh and you can basically use this thread that he uh, uh toes along with him as part of the gameplay mechanic almost but not quite like bionic commando um plants vs zombie garden warfare 2 the 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 fall up to uh plants vs zombie garden warfare garden warfare which was the game that turned plants vs zombie from kind of a strategy based game uh, and desktop tower defense into a thir- uh, third-person shooter. Uh, now they're going through EA Sports lineup, including uh, new NHL 16, Rory McIlroy's PGA Tour, NBA, six- NBA Live 16, and then NFL 16. Uh, and they're just getting into mobile. And by the way, just the second, right as you were finishing up, new collectible card game from Star Wars, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. So everybody's trying to do Hearthstone now, basically. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's been a it's been a huge hit for Blizzard, so I'm not I'm not too surprised. And it's smart going that free to play route, and then adding things that you can add on later uh, that you can pay for more card packs, more things of that nature. It, it's a good it's a good model. It's a working model. It keeps people engaged. It keeps them wanting the next level of stuff. Um, so I think we've we've seen that working out really well, and people are making that grab now. Uh, although Kyle Orland at Ars Technica says absolutely no applause for the Star Wars collectible card it's, game. It's, you know, for a lot of the audience members, maybe because they're they've been around, they've been around a lot of these E3s. It's like okay, I, I, we see what you're you're trying to le- leverage on the popularity of blah 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 game or blah blah scenario or you know pick whatever and trying to run with it. The Xbox kind of uh, uh, keynote kind of had a couple. Or, presentation had a couple of those as well where it's like oh we got this and it's like one clap <laughs> well, people yeah. are really on my twitter stream at least people are very excited about unravel um i don't know if the presentation was particularly heartfelt um but it seems like people are already really relating to yarny and his plight or it's, her plight it's a really it's a really good looking game if you can imagine mm-hmm. the visuals from a uh, uh, little big planet um and then you you know it, and it's a 2D platformer. So it's it's a very engage. I mean, just looking at it, it looks like a very engaging game. You know, if you told some of the premise over lunch, it's like eh, maybe. But if you actually look at what they had on offer, it's actually pretty sweet. It looks pretty sweet. Yeah, that's what I love about these small indie titles is that they they have this opportunity to tell these very different kinds of stories from a big AAA title. And they're usually smaller, they're easier to consume, they don't take as long to play, but they really pack a punch with the with the emotions that they can fit into something like that and the storytelling that they can do that's so different. Um, and I think that's, you know, it, it, as the graphics and, and the gameplay just get better and better each new generation, it's the storytelling is improving in such an incredible way too. I think, I think... I mean, at least with this E3, what I've noticed is the graphics have kind of plateaued in so much that you aren't getting those huge generational leaps that you saw from, like, the PS1 to PS2, PS2 to PS3. Mm-hmm. But you, what you do see is taking the existing formulas and actually now, okay, we have the graphics 
down. Let us figure out how to way, make the game actually more engaging instead of just giving it a higher resolution coat of paint. You know, more eye candy, let's make it more cerebral. Let's make it more like, oh, this isn't just another third-person shooter, even though there were a lot of third-person shooters. Yeah, or you're saying something like Cuphead, which they showed off in the Microsoft announcement, where they're pursuing an entirely different style and saying, let's mm -hmm. see how close to a 1930s animation style we can get. And, and it's incredibly impressive because of how good it looks knowing it's supposed Look, to be it looks like steamboat willie yeah it, it is. really good. I mean, it's essentially it's that style and it's very fleischman oriented it's, mm -hmm. it's it does have that and this is a great thing about it. i think once you once you can say all right i don't need to worry about making super awesome graphics and we're going to invest you know all our time and energy and that's like okay now now we've reached a point where Let's think about how we want the game to actually be different, other than looking prettier or sounding better. Yeah. Let's, you know, it, and it's it's actually kind of it's it's really neat to see, because you know for a, you know for the past five years it's been shooter this shooter that, but look now you got a different gun that looks better or you got better effects. Well, it's um, not just that too, but it's also since the hardware is improving, we're we're getting things like this interoperability between Windows 10 and the console with Xbox One. So now you can actually we're going to be able to finally play with our PC brethren and vice versa moving forward. And that's, you know, that's that's huge. I mean, PlayStation 4 has been able to do this to some extent for a while now, um, which has been really cool. But this is really big for me, especially because I play so many titles on the PC that I kind of wish I could play with my Xbox friends every so often. That hasn't been an option. And Or if I buy a game for Xbox and I want to be able to play it once in a while on my PC with my PC friends. Now we're going to be able to do that. And for me, that is the biggest announcement I think that Xbox came out with so far at E3. I, yeah, I th Satya Mania running wild in the Xbox world as well. Uh, it's a kinder, gentler Microsoft where they say, sure, we're going to make a HoloLens, uh, but we're also going to support not only Oculus, which we announced last Friday, but Valve VR. And though v Valve and Microsoft are not on the best of speaking terms these days, but Microsoft is willing to say, look, we just want to, we want to support whatever you want to use. We want to make things easy cross-platform. We don't want to be competing with ourselves uh, mm -hmm. and, and we want Windows 10 because it is going to essentially have a version running on Xbox to to be the same world, no matter whether you're using this shape of a device or a Surface tablet or a laptop or whatever. And, and I think it's really telling. I mean, if you compare this E3 with at least Xbox, uh, the Xbox uh, press event versus the one last year, last year was, was you know, they gave a nod to games, but they were really pushing all the other services uh, on the platform, and now they in now they've they've really okay. This is all this is about the games. This is about gaming. Mm -hmm. And what's even more important, I think, is that they're acknowledging that there is a gaming. There, there's gaming in Microsoft on the PC side. You know, for the longest time, they've all you know everything. Every kind of PC game initiative that Microsoft did was sort of a back burner affair. It was like, mm -hmm. you know, buy for games. I mean, just everything was kludgy, didn't work well, and people were just running en masse to, uh, to, to platforms like Steam because it did it, everything so much better. Uh, it was, you know, less tedious. Uh, it's very straightforward. Things were cheaper. It, it was great across the board, and I think Microsoft is welcome to the facts. Like, you know what, we, not, we need to get everything um, in almost a platform agnostic fashion where, you know, everything's tied together by Microsoft with you know a, a Microsoft back end, but you know whatever you're you're using to get you know to to play our games, whether it's an Xbox console or a PC, we're going to support that. Yeah, I think the backward compatibility is really interesting because that was out of left field. It was out of left field. It's less than they announced because they wouldn't tell us how many games are going to be supported, and you know it's going to be a small list, and it was difficult to do. Uh, this is not a machine that can just take a disc and run it. You have to, they noted, you have to download that disc to your hard drive to make it work. So there's some sort of emulation uh, or conversion going on. And they had to write code to put into the Xbox One platform to do that, specifically to be able to come out on stage and make this announcement, which did get a huge rousing uh, round of applause. I almost think out of proportion to the benefit that people are going to get from it. I mean, uh, they... They announced like at least a hundred games. I'm hoping targeting a hundred games by this holiday season, which I mean by the end of the year. Yeah, I'm sure um, it'll be all the big titles too, or at least it will all be all the things. big titles. But it'll probably, be, you know, I'm sure a majority of the games will be the ones that adhered 
to the uh, the API uh, development platform that Microsoft wanted everyone to use because at that point then it's more of porting the actual API you know infrastructure over onto the Xbox One so you don't have to emulate the hardware on the 360 you just need to emulate the engine that it that that the game runs on um, and so it's it's a shrewd move because really, you know, if you think about it, it's it's a lot of work for very little money return, like dollar return, but it's huge in the PR campaign that they have going on with Sony and, and to a lesser extent Nintendo. To yeah, I mean, they're, they're finally back on an upward slope against PlayStation. You know, they, they finally, with that, that $50 price decrease on the Xbox One, they're, they're starting to recover some of that lost market share. And I think, you know, going back to the Xbox 360 players who have held on to that console for dear life because they don't want to give up their favorite titles, you know, this is going to go a long way in, in easing people into the next generation. I am yeah. definitely, yeah, I'm definitely surprised at how well Microsoft came out with with this with these announcements they they did a lot to kind of placate the the fact that a lot of people are thinking that Microsoft isn't concerned about gamers or concerned about adding new television uh, media content services to this platform so it's just this giant H, you know home theater PC in your living room that does everything and does games sort of well you know if you're a gamer you're going to go with the PS4 i think this kind of uh, was an answer to a lot of those kind of uh, um, uh, rumblings from, mm -hmm. from people. Yeah, Phil Should Spencer. Should we talk about some of the... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Tom. I was just going to say, Phil Spencer grabbed control of this from Don Matrick a couple of years ago and, and wrenched it back towards the gaming side. Uh, and one of the ways you saw that was that Xbox Elite wireless controller. Uh, swappable components, a carrying case, uh, differing lengths of rear paddles. Uh, you can... I think there's 255 they, different profiles uh, combinations you can use to remap the buttons. You they, can remap the buttons in the middle of a game. You can, be, you, can, you can switch from one profile to another. I think it's only between two selected profiles, but you, know, you can have sort of a looser fine-tuning on your analog stick or a tighter one and then switch to the, to the opposite. Uh, what the are you going to say, Roger? Because it's pretty crazy. No, the modular, I mean, the modular gamepad isn't new. The idea, like Logitech and a few other companies came up for the PC and, and for you know, third-party controllers for the console, but this is huge because now this is kind of an official... Uh, 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 controller that supports this, and I can only imagine what the cottage industry that will spring up around oh, it. Yeah. Like, oh, look, you can get you know you can get Hello Kitty colored you know you know doodads that you can kind of tack onto it, and the ability to customize the controller is huge. I think people don't underestimate how you know for some people whether because you're left-handed or some you know the the layout doesn't fit you. This totally makes it you know so much easier, and I'm also wondering if this will lend itself. Uh, for developing um, a control mechanism for people who have uh, limited mobility, either with their hands or, mm -hmm. or, or you know, you know, or they can't, for example, they can't use both hands mm -hmm. or something. It would be, I mean, it would be great because right now you have to buy a very expensive uh, device that basically wraps around the controller to be able to use things like your feet uh, or maybe your head to, to 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 run, jump, and push buttons. And, and this is something, too, that I think may actually get me back into using a controller for PC gaming, because that's something we've been able to do with, with a lot of titles on the PC side. However, I've never really done it because I like having the ability to, to key map my different buttons on my 20-button mouse and on my keyboard, my you know old Z-board, and, and I, I like having that functionality and being able to swap profile or profiles based on what game I'm playing on the PC, for example. So giving it this extra level of modularity, I guess, is, is really, I think, very appealing to some of the more hardcore PC gamers that want to be able to switch out buttons, switch out profiles, do all that stuff that we're very accustomed to doing with our gaming mouses and keyboards. And no, um, and you can't run macros on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, macro, macros are like one of the one of the one of the unsung advantages of just yeah. PC gaming. It's like what yeah. one key, boom. Well, and, and I haven't the, done macros since my old WoW days. The uh, the the controller itself stores the profiles too, so you don't have that lag of the computer trying to remap 
on the fly as it goes, which is, a, I think, a, a big advantage as well. We don't know how this, much this thing is going to cost, though, uh, so we'll have to wait. It's probably going to be 70 bucks, 60 bucks. You think bucks. so? Yeah. I think it might be closer to 100 I, I think they could get away with closer to 100 They could, but at the same time, you know, that, that's the thing. That's the connect price, which brings up another point. That's the one thing you noticed they didn't really mention yeah. for any gameplay was con- the new connect. Yes, that's was, a very good point. <laughs> I don't know that the word came up. In the it entire press conference. That, that I've yeah. noticed. You know, maybe yeah. he might have kind of mumbled it or connect. But, uh, yeah, that was oh, one thing. Oh, shoot. Yeah, wow. It's, it's, very, it's very telling that it wasn't. It's, it's, it was, I noticed it by its absence. And uh, I'm wondering, you know, it, are they going to come out with – they can't come out with a super expensive peripheral. Because no, they're skipping. They're skipping straight to VR. They're strip, going straight to VR headsets. They're gonna the whole the whole Connect thing. I'm sure is gonna be phased out within the next couple of years. Yeah, VR and AR. I, I think Connect yeah. might merge into the box, possibly as as just a, a kind of a, a speech recognition well, visual detection camera. Right. The way we That's have cameras kind of and mics in our laptops. That's kind of what's happening with Move on on the PlayStation side. You know, they're taking a lot of that technology and putting it into their into their headset. Um, so it would make sense to me that we'd see Connect, but in a very modified kind of way to make the interoperability between the headset and the the console more efficient. Roger, which of the game announcements most excited you? Because Microsoft was saying this is the best lineup of Xbox games in history. Which is funny because the one game that really caught my attention was Cuphead just because visually it's a very uh, stunning and very remarkable game. The other one, of course, was the one that was announced last night, and that was um, Fallout 4. Yay! I, I like Fallout 4. And I, see, see I, can't, I'm a RP, I like RPGs, but I'm not a fantasy RPG guy. Like, I'm, I'm not really big on Swords, Dragons, and Crossbows. But, uh, but a Mass Effect, uh, the new Mass Effect Andromeda, I am sitting on pins and needles because I want to play that now. I don't want to wait. I wanted it to come out this fall, not next year. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm really, Fallout 4 is my jam. I'm super excited about it. I love Bethesda games. I love Fallout. I'm, I'm like, already, like, I, I saw the trailer and I started crying. Like, that is how <laughs> I wasn't I, like that. I was because of the how, dog? Like, crazy I am about Fallout. Because of the dog, because of the whole, you get to see some of, like, the, you know, the, the early days before, you know, basically nuclear Armageddon happens. And Armageddon. so for me, it's like, you know, it's, it's going to be really, of, uh, I don't know how different it's going to be, but I'm excited to see some of the backstory of, of that world. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really super excited I, about it. I will say that, you know, E3s still have a lot of sequelitis. There's a lot of sequels. Um, yes. But uh, the the uh, uh, unravel was one of the first games, and, and uh, along with uh, uh, Cupped, that uh, kind of like said, "Hey, good. There's people out here that are making new fran- new you know, new games with new franchises that aren't, you know, some variation yeah. on the pre-existing one." And that's I think that's good to see. And you know, Tomb Raider, you know, Tomb Raider looks awesome. Tomb Raider looks awesome, and even though it is part of a very long franchise, with the reboot that they did with the the, the one last or a mm-hmm. couple of years ago, I think they've actually moved it up uh, to a new level. And, oh, it's and elevated, not just, totally. not just graphically, uh, but they did elevate kind of the gameplay into something that wasn't just a straight uh, third-person shoot, 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 jump, jump, jump platformer. There I was- almost feel like I would I would put Tomb Raider the the reboot. I you know I would consider putting that on par with the entire Uncharted series, which is like a big thing for me to say. But I think in terms of visualizations and storytelling and like character development, I think it's it's right up there. I I would say I would say it's close to it. I think Uncharted still has much better script writing and much better voice acting. Hmm. Okay, I'll give you the voice acting for sure. They kind of kicked it, and you know. I mean, they re- they really. But let me just say, a lot of money on it. if something happens to that dog in Fallout Four, I'm gonna <laughs> burn this mf'er down. I'm going to go to Bethesda, Maryland. I'm gonna find Todd Howard, and I'm going to end. I swear, I will find you. I will. If oh. anything like that happens, please be aware I am in no way connected to Veronica Belmont or any of her thoughts. <laughs> the threats of Veronica Belmont in no way represent some brilliant LLC, Daily Tech News Show, or its hosts. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. 
But uh, I, I have to agree with you. Rise of the Tomb Raider had to be transfixed. And I know it's, you know, it's a playable quote unquote demo. Uh, but if that game looks as good as that mountainside scene, like you're, they are definitely uh, continuing to step up that game. Uh, I, I couldn't take my eyes off, off of that. And, and it, it, was, it was the tension of that scene of like whether she's going to make it through and they're climbing a mountain and it's just really good storytelling, like you said. Yes. I also, Gigantic caught my eye because it looks very much in the same style of Blizzard's Overwatch. And I feel like that's another trend that's bubbling up. I mean, all the big, big basically you see people floating in space or uh, people in a post-apocalyptic dark environment environment uh from the big companies so it's it's nice to see brightly colored things coming around as well mm, mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah it's definitely nice to see that everything isn't all about the end of the world guns and body count yeah yeah and it's it's spe specifically uh, spe uh specificity it's very interesting too that um that tomb raider is going to be platform um is going to be only for xbox I mean, that's oh, right. so Xbox exclusive. Yeah. So Xbox exclusive. These all stay in exclusive for like a year. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> and they always make a bigger deal out of it at E3 than any, you know, because they yeah. want to make it sound like they have all the games. But, and, and you should but always. It's a good get. You can't, you can't yeah. deny that. They, uh, and, you know, when they mean exclusive, they mean console, ex console exclusive. Because if they're going to make money on Steam or a PC5, they're going to do it. Yeah. Well, and Microsoft's fine with that. They sell Windows after all. Uh, so coming up, uh, as we say, the EA uh, press conference uh, going on right now, and if any anything else huge uh, comes out of that, you know, like I don't New know, New Mirror's Battle, Edge, Star apparently Wars from Battlefront T -T -T hasn't been mentioned yet. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll cover that in tomorrow's show. And of course, uh, by the time you're listening to this, Ubisoft may have made their announcements, Sony may have made their announcements, Nintendo has a digital announcement uh, that will all be on tomorrow's show with Patrick Beja as well. Any last thoughts on A3, Veronica? It's hard to keep up these days. I mean, I love video games, but being not being in the gaming industry anymore, it's definitely hard to to keep track of all the big announcements. I I pretty much lock into the ones that I'm super excited about and learn everything I can about them, and then you know other stuff bubbles to the surface eventually. It's it's hard to keep up. It's a lot of information. A game has to work hard to win your your love. It's a lot. It's a big time investment. Yeah, you know, I mean, sure. we we all have different things pulling us in different directions, and you only have so much time for gaming. So. It's got to so, be good. So you were so your thoughts on E3 are step it up, people. You got to impress me. <laughs> got to impress Belmont. <laughs> Roger, what about you? I think, you know, it's kind of where you know, one half I see it's kind of traditional, you know, standard video gaming, uh, giant press event. Uh, one of the it's I, I ditto a lot of what you know. I agree with a lot of what Veronica said. What kind of I don't know if it's a good or bad thing is that E3 has turned. It's kind of away from what was originally two vendors meeting, like you know, uh, a publisher and a, a store that's going to buy their game and distribute it, to more of, hey, let's forward face directly to the gamers, directly to the public, and more about kind of, you know, I hate to say it, but a bit of a dog and pony show. Like you're, you're flogging your wares in front, of, in front of an audience. And I'm wondering in the future how long, you know, events like E3 will be around when you know a, a lot of larger publishers might do the Apple thing. It's like, well, don't need to be at this event. We can do our own. So step it up. I don't have time for all of you, and you can't keep this up forever, people. Yes. It's, it's, the dream will end <laughs> soon. All right. <laughs> These are our thoughts on E3. Uh, I want to point out, too, real quick, T2T2 uh, sent us the Ars Technica link that is now updated. Uh, Xbox.com apparently says that the Microsoft controller, Elite controller, will come out in October for $150. Oh, my Ooh. gosh. That's what I was thinking, and I was like, this is, wait, they're guessing. So they're way like, lowballing me. I didn't mean on the other side. Oh, I should have uh, just said it out loud. Dumb, yeah. that's, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for a controller. Also, I don't. I I guess that's why they didn't make that announcement in the press conference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For that reaction, that's yeah. like twenty bucks more than a connect. Yeah. No. It's right. it's. I mean, you it's get a carrying case. Well, you, you use it more pieces. than the connect. You know, I I shouldn't joke because a lot of people do spend money on fighting sticks for like Street Fighter. Um, yeah. And they they'll spend like one hundred fifty, two hundred bucks on getting custom made ones. So well, I gamers guess this, will go for this too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, hmm. mm. I, don't know, I wouldn't spend. I wouldn't spend. Not impressed. Roger says no. 
You know what? I have a kid. I'd rather feed my kid over getting a nice hundred fifty dollar game All controller. All right. <laughs> That's perfectly fair. Uh, yeah. If you, if it's between those two things, I would I would choose fee- feeding even your child over That's great. a hundred fifty dollar controller. Uh, don't so so the, our last e three note is don't starve children to buy controllers. Yes, because if you do, then you need a reevaluation of your life. <laughs> our pick of the day comes from Davulu, who's been sending us some great ones. Thanks for sending these along. Uh, the website is called speciesinpieces.com. There's hyphens in there, so species-in-pieces.com. It was created by the Amsterdam-based designer Brian James, who wanted to push the limits of cascading style sheets and CSS's animation capabilities while building a platform for raising awareness of endangered species. Uh, so the result is an interactive catalog of 30 animals who are endangered, uh, created entirely with CSS, and each animation focuses on the 30 pieces used to create them, as well as stats about the different animals. Uh, obviously, it works best in Google Chrome, which has, has definitely pushed the idea of in-browser CSS animation and HTML5. Uh, but check it out. I, it's a really cool little site. And I found it not only beautiful, but also educational myself. So thank you for sending that, Devulu. Species in Pieces. Again, species-in-pieces.com. Send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. Uh, Roger, do, let me know. I know you've got to jump out here at some point. So let me know if you need to go right now. Do you? Uh, I don't know. My landlord hasn't called me. My landlord's coming right. over to help me. Well, if your landlord calls, rush, run off. Uh, we got a couple emails here. Uh, Russell wrote in and said on Friday's show, you guys, uh, Roger, Jenny, uh, Len, and Lamar, were talking about Google being forced to block a website as part of a judgment by a Canadian court against a company called Datalink. Russell said, the strange thing about this was the use of a private company to enforce a judgment. I'm not a lawyer, but would it, see, it would seem the enforcement of a judgment would lay in the hands of law enforcement, the judicial system, or the correctional system. This seems like a very strange thing to do and felt a bit off. Well, Google feels the same way. In fact, that's what the whole right to be forgotten fight in Europe is about, Russell. It's the exact same thing, which is uh, the the governments, in, in this case Canada, but in the r- case of right to be forgotten Europe, saying to a private entity, Google, uh, you are responsible for the messages carried through your system. And so if we find that those messages are against the law, you will have to block them. Uh, same thing goes on in the UK when ISPs are ordered to block certain websites from being accessed. In other words, they just do not translate the underlying IP address into a domain name. Uh, so yeah, it is it is odd. Uh, and Russell says, I'm wondering if there's a lawyer in the community who could sh- shed some more light on it. And I agree. If there's any lawyers on there who can who can argue why what the legal theory is that says uh, that a judge can tell a private company, a search engine, uh, yes, it it is now your responsibility to remove this link because uh, linking generally is considered legal. Interesting question. Uh, And then Scott said, with Friday's news and rumor that BlackBerry may not be working on an Android-based phone, uh, he's wondering if Nokia and BlackBerry are perfectly suited for a partnership of some sort. BlackBerry brings device management and security, with Samsung Knox nipping at its heels, as well as BlackBerry Messenger, one of the largest messaging clients, fourth or fifth, while Nokia brings solid mapping, which it really wants to become a viable small smartphone alternative to Google Maps and our Apple Maps. Both have a devoted fan base, and I believe they have both moved away from producing their own hardware. Well, BlackBerry hasn't, but a lot of people think they should, mm-hmm. uh, and and they, they, they have shown that they can they've in other words they have contracted manufacturers to make hardware for them so they've taken steps in that direction uh partnership of two drowning rats Ouch. Scott. <laughs> i think nokia is still uh, what well, didn't isn't nokia owned by microsoft now no nokia's no? handset division is owned by so. microsoft nokia maps uh the nokia networking and nokia research is owned still by by Nokia. And at the end of this year, I think what's causing a lot of the speculation, Nokia will have the right to start their own, making their own handsets again if they wanted to. So maybe, I don't know. It's, you know, you're, I mean, for fan base, yeah, it could work, but I don't know if it would work in terms of how they want to position themselves. Because BlackBerry, that's a point where they really only have their enterprise security to kind of you know, bring forth as like a very unique, better than anyone else has. Um, and we're trying to figure out what the, how the mapping would tie in to that. 
I feel like yeah. the partnership here isn't necessarily Nokia going back to designing handsets. A lot of people speculated they could design handsets and have an independent manufacturer make them. Uh, and I don't think it's BlackBerry doing that either, but maybe teaming up. Uh, or maybe BlackBerry should buy Nokia's map division, which Nokia mm -hmm. has said it is willing to sell at the right price. Uh, and a lot of people have speculated that. Veronica, what do you think? Yeah, I, I could see them definitely going into getting getting the maps portion of that business and kind of you know building out their roster of of really good dependable services that they that they offer so far. I know Roger has been a big BlackBerry user in the past. I you was. Still? You were. Was. That was previous, I have, right? I have a Nexus Four and I've had it for three years. I love it. Full on, full on Android now. I think that's my landlord. So uh, <laughs> he's like, I'm out. Well, thank you, Roger Sorry. Tank, for joining us. Follow him on Twitter, Jolly Roger. Uh, anything else before you say hello to your landlord? Uh, no, I'll be back to finish up the show notes. All right, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Raj. I'll be back to finish up the show notes. Veronica Belmont as well. Uh, as always, a pleasure. Twitter.com slash Veronica. Anything else uh, going on? Obviously, the new show on Engadget. Yeah, the brand new show, Dear Veronica, on Engadget. Every Wednesday morning, we are tackling your biggest questions from the world of technology, science, etiquette, social media. If you've got questions, I will do my best to answer them. And if I can't answer them, I will find an expert who can. Um, so we're, I'm really excited. I'm shooting the next two episodes uh, Wednesday. And uh, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be really fun. It's uh, We've gotten some great questions so far. People have been really excited about the show and, and giving a lot of great feedback. And we're working on a podcast feed. Uh, that's the big number one ask that everyone's been pinging me about. And, uh, you know, it, it's a little harder to do when you're at a big company like AOL and Gadget. So I'm, I'm working on it, though. And hopefully by next week, uh, we'll have a feed up and ready for you guys. Yeah. If you're asking, let me just say this on behalf of Veronica. If you're asking her about a podcast feed, just know that she's not the one who gets to go just do it. Like yeah, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> I can't. It's not, not like in the this old particular days. case. They're used to like sword and laser where it's like, oh, well, I, I can fix that. Do, do, do. Uh, that's, you know, it's a, big, it's a bigger world. It's a, it's a different animal. Yeah, yeah but yeah. It's, been, it's been a lot of fun so far. Very cool. And gadget.com slash dear dash Veronica, folks, go check it out. Uh, and last week, more than ever, I, I think you got see what, what we have built here thanks to you, our bosses. Uh, we appreciate every single person who supports the show. It's the value for value model. You get value out of the show. Uh, we All we ask is that you give whatever value you can back. Patreon.com slash Ace Detect, of course, or DailyTechNewsShow.com slash support for all the different ways to support the shows. To all 5,069 patrons, all the people who support us in any other way thank you thank you thank you uh, for making this show possible our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com you can give us a call 51259 daily listen to the show live at alphageekradio.com and visit our website dailytechnewsshow.com more e3 coverage as i mentioned tomorrow with patrick beja talk to you then Part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Great show. <laughs> what should we call it? Yeah, let's look at the at the fingers. Showbox awesome. TV. Good. Did you, did you enjoy that? I did because I am also a super Fallout. Fan. Yeah, huge. Um, and I will join you in the quest for Dog's Revenge if anything happens to that All damn right. dog. Dog's Revenge, I love it. Have you seen the trailer for Max yet? Oh, oh. I cried. I cried in the theater. I cry. Oh, I'm cool. like, I, I don't know what is wrong with me, but I, I'm like a commercial crier. I'm a tr <laughs> movie trailer crier. I'm like, you talk about a dog getting hurt, I'll just start crying. It's like not, not good. Yeah, I, can't, I, have I couldn't make it through. I couldn't make it through the trailer. Ugh. I they will see it. played it before though. Jurassic World, yeah. Is that where you saw it? Yeah. No, I saw it before. Um, oh, what did I see that wasn't very good? I can't remember. I, I, loved, I loved Jurassic World, though, but you knew I would. <laughs> Jurassic Park is my favorite movie. And so Jurassic World just made me feel like it was a really fun reboot. I loved it. Yeah. That was off topic. Um, no, not at all. We talk all about movies on this post show. Um, all right, so wait, but before we get into that, titles. Um, let's see. 
we're doomed. <laughs> um, Methesda. I like that, Methesda. Which oh, album? Where is that? Yeah, I don't see that that's, either. Oh, Methesda. Down. Down. It only has one vote. Mm. It's sort of a, it's a wide, it's a shallow field today. It's a lot of me not being impressed. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if IBM was a strong enough story to be to warrant a title. The spark of Maybe IBM. They just liked be. the puns. Yeah, it was a good pun. Thank you. Belmont is not impressed, is leading the way, though. I know. Not by much, though. I'm not impressed with by how far it's leading. <laughs> We're doomed. Okay. We're doomed. <laughs> Partnership of two drowning rats. It's pretty good. Hooked on a foot feeling. <laughs> I don't know. We're doomed as leading. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling these. No, you're not getting you. You liked Methesda. I don't understand. Yeah, like Methesda. Um, what, is it, what is that a joke? I, I get that it's because it's a joke, but what's the meh? My interpretation was super addictive. Oh, hmm. And we're excited about it because it's not, it wouldn't be meh, M-E-H, that right. stuff. Right, that's how I read it. Yeah, because it's we, we're excited about it. We're not feeling meh. It has multiple interpretations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We still got time. So here's a question. Backward compatibility, we're... maybe. Yeah. Uh, here's a question. Yes. I have a question for smarter yeah. people than I. Mm, sorry. Um, I can't help you. <laughs> if, uh, if I wanted to uh, potentially assign a theoretical class that I theoretically teach um, to do a DIY 360 degree camera rig and shoot 360 degree video, and stitch it together and put it on YouTube. Is there anything that is not, and tell a story with it, is there anything that is not possible for that to happen right now other than the need to get like 16 GoPros or however many GoPros? Well, there's that little, that 360 camera that, um, who had, did someone have one at the Bull BOL reunion, Tom? That, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the person had who an works at the place. prototype. I'm not even sure if we're supposed yeah. to. No, no okay, admit good. That it I didn't, then I didn't say that. Well, I think yeah. it's okay to admit it was there, but I yeah. wouldn't say any more about who okay. or from where. Good. I didn't. <laughs> but I, I have a bunch of, you know, uh, theoretical school children uh, who are not like, well, anyway, I won't even say that. I will just say, <laughs> uh, is it? do you think it's theoretically possible to have them build a head rig with if they had a bunch of GoPros and then stitched together? This might be a Roger question. Mm. I'm just trying to decide if that's like a reasonable ask for a project. So you gave up on the titles is what you're saying. Yeah, I did. Uh, I'm letting you choose. <laughs> and you just want to solve your own personal problems. I want to solve my own personal problems on the post show. I'm going to use We're Doomed. That's what this post show today. is all about. I'm going to use We're Doomed as right. our title right. because we're doomed. Um, check the chat room. I bet they're starting to come up with some, some things. They are. You, there are plenty of programs that will stitch together 360 degree video for you yeah um how good they are i don't know it's not yeah, so as nobody's easy doing it as, for free yet that's, that's 360 the, degree it seems picture. to me pictures would be easy yeah it seems to me that the software is the is the hold up right because like everybody has a gopro yeah. and you could probably build a rig not too hard and youtube now supports it in some degree but it's the software that's the problem well, it's the software that is the thing that was like GoPro made a big deal about announcing at Google I.O. that they had software who could, that could do that. Yeah. I think you can do very short, very limited versions of it uh, as long as you, you know, basically do markers and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah I, don't think, I don't think there's like an off the shelf thing that just does it. For so maybe video. next semester you could, for, for video, picture, yeah. for picture, you know, if you wanted to give them something that would mit, let them get the experience of 360 degrees and say like, hey, the next step will soon be video, you could have them do pictures and that wouldn't be that hard. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're basically saying uh, replicate what GoPro just announced yes. out of their lab. Mm -hmm. 
and you can't do yeah. that yet. Too bad. Too All right, next bad. semester. Oh, my fault. Dwellers Probably not even so next dead. semester. Maybe two years from now. Oh, wait. I'm starting to look. Hold on. I know YouTube they're, supports it. They're 40. Yeah, YouTube definitely. The end The end. Oh, single cam. Yeah, Tinvec points out you could do it single cam. I got to go, guys. All right. Okay. Thanks, Veronica. Thank Bye, Veronica. you. Bye. Um, you could just do fisheye single cam, wouldn't? Yeah. Mm. And again, you're trying to approximate something that's like fresh out of the lab. Yeah, I know. But I feel like other people must be out there doing that. Oh, there I went. Nope, now I'm back. Okay, so it's a refresh. Tom, look, what's happening right now? I know I you're working. I can't. I can't look right now. I know. Sorry. It's a refresh problem. I don't it even know. It just freaks out and freezes. Um, Where am I? Okay, there we go. Are you Jump. getting anything out of the chat room? Yes. It, I had to wait for it to catch up. Um, Any good? Yeah, Google, this is what they announced at Google I.O., the jump, the jump rig. Mm -hmm. uh, I will sign up to learn more. Uh, filmmaker, director, sure. You're you're essentially asking like the the day 4K cameras came out like right. hey is there a cheap way to do 4K? <laughs> but isn't that what everybody that can't afford the rig asks? Sure. Yeah. Usually takes a technology being out for a little while before the uh, the knockoffs <laughs> come along. Yeah. I'm writing up my answers right now. Writing up your answers? Yeah, like for why I want a jump camera. <laughs> Oh, yeah. They'll still make you pay for it, though, I think. It's okay. Or, do you know how much it is? Uh, yeah, but the school, it's not just me. Oh, do you think the school has budget for that? Probably not. Because that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, all of a sudden, it, the calculus changes entirely as soon as you're like, oh, wait, but the school would pay. Like, oh, now it could be $10,000. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they will for my class. But I, I think well, you could, might be able to convince them. I get that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah, I, the bottom line is, uh, when one is about to embark, here's an interesting conundrum. This is the root of the conundrum. Getting away from 360 degree video for a second. Mm. The root of the conundrum is when I start ginning up a lesson plan about web series. I am left not feeling super excited about teaching it. Mm. I think, and, I, and I've been thinking a lot about this this weekend because I'm trying to gin up a lesson plan about web series. And I'm coming to the conclusion that we're at a lull, podcasts aside and live streaming aside, does it feel like we're in a little bit of a lull for the traditional web series? Or maybe not a lull, but a... It doesn't feel to me like the form is evolving. And so I started to think about, okay, well, why is that? And where would the form go? And I came up with the people who usually pay to sponsor a good web series might be putting their money into the next thing, right? And then 
You see where I'm going with this? And then like not what? really because I'm all, I can't yeah, I'm I doing something else at the same time. But I, my I, question, I so question, so my totally yeah. like half listening question is like, yeah, but what's a web series? Sounds like you're trying right. to preserve an old form of something. I agree. Okay. That that was my other theory. Like the a, it's too broad a term, right? Yeah. And B, uh, it's the one minute webisode the the I'm trying to think of a good example i don't know I, I maybe it's just too broad a topic what web series yeah i just think it's a, becoming a meaningless topic yeah Web series was when people who did television said, well, you can't do that on the web, so let's make some video and call it a web series. And now right. there's, just, there's just no difference. There's shorts and there's series and there's one-offs, but the, 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 it's, it's no longer determined by the carrying capacity anymore. It's determined. That is the conclusion that I've been sort of struggling with. Yeah. But the content is not limited by the tubes anymore. Yeah, I just exactly. Like I hate that word. But that the storytelling is not limited by the tubes. Right. It's limited by... I still think it's limited by the um, watchability of something on the device. I think it's still influenced by device. Uh, you could definitely say that your story is influenced by screen size, right? Yes. Um, so that, that is something that won't change. Like you'll always have smaller devices and medium devices and larger screens. And, and, and so you've got to decide like, oh, well, which, which screen am I targeting with this? Mm -hmm. And then it be, then you, then you've got something like mobile, like a, you're, you're making yeah. a mobile series because you mean for people to watch it on Snapchat or, right. you know, on Facebook or Micro. YouTube on their phone. Micro storytelling. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I'm, I'm sort of coming to is that it's just like uh, that it, I don't know, tubularly limited, Schnago. I like that. <laughs> uh, and then... Yeah, so that's where my mind went, was straight to 360. Like, all right, well, if, if that has become not differentiated from full-length feature except for where it ends up, then what is the thing that differentiates now? And I thought, you know, starting to tell stories in 360 degrees might be interesting. But I, I can but tell them like, about that's it. That's leaping way ahead. Yeah, that Which uh, isn't bad, it's just yeah. expensive. <laughs> well, they can't do it, but maybe at least... I can talk about it. That's sort of the thing the thing to keep your eye on as the next the next format. Yeah, yeah. mobile is actually the current. I think mobile is your current like yeah. that's where that's where people are trying to f crack now. With augmented reality in terms of using not only storytelling but also using your phone as the gateway to other content. Yeah, I'm not even talking about augmented reality. I'm just saying like video that works on mobile that people will consume on mobile is a huge, that's the pinnacle right now. That's what everybody's trying to figure out. Yeah. And then augmented reality is a little bit farther like next and then ver then 360 degree is, is a little bit next as far as DIYing it. And it goes. Yeah. All right, did I, what did I screw up? Did I screw anything up? Ah, Metal Freak has appeared. There is open source software for it. Oh, of course there is. What, the Vahana thing? I don't know. <laughs> We're about to find out in the, 40 the, Somebody mentioned something called Vahana, but I think that was $2,700. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah your TVZ Gun found a 360-degree camera adapter. I think that's a single camera, but still. Mm -hmm. that, that's really not a bad way to go as far mm -hmm. as when you're talking about DIYing it. Where is where is TVZ Gun's thing? I gotta look that up there. It's in the chat room. It's back there somewhere. Vahana's the stitching. Oh, and people were asking in the chat room. Uh, is, so we streamed on Daily Tech News Show instead of Ace Detect on YouTube today, and uh, is that going to be the case? Yes, unless something in the next couple of days proves that to be a problem. Uh, that is what we're going to continue to do. 
so that we don't, every time I have to go do something else, have to switch back and forth. The reason we don't use Ace Detect when I'm not here is it's tied to my actual Gmail account. So it doesn't, you know, I can't, I can't give that and it's uh, to other people, whereas the Daily Tech News Show account uh, just is the Daily Tech News Show account. So that's something we can, we can have multiple people have access to. Anyway, um, so that's, that's where this will be. And I'll, I'll put a note. I'll make a little short video or something and put it up on the Ace Detect mm -hmm. channel, let people know that. But, uh, yeah. And better to have the pain now than when we actually reach our video level, right? Well, yeah, I guess. I mean, there's always – it's better to have the pain now than later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for sure. We'll never reach the video level. No, I – shut – come on, Tom. That's how you make it happen. You deny it. <laughs> uh, we're still we're still reaching and unreaching the Scott Veronica level every day. That's really weird. Um. So let's see what else. Um. That's it. I'm out of the post. Oh well, that's awesome. Yeah. Anything else? Um. What's coming up next? Uh, figuring out where the stop broadcast button is. And then cord killers immediately following the Monday cast where everything goes wrong. And people yell a lot. 